Welcome back to Palo Talk. Yeah, you were talking about Ondo State before uh, we went on break. Yes. So, for for Ondo State, the reason, in my opinion, why the PDP was able to win Ondo State is very simple. You have infighting in the APC in the sense that the current state governor, being a member of the APC, is a new governor trying to build a structure for himself. But right. within his party, he has resistance. And mm -hmm. um, the only thing he could do was to go outside the party to sponsor his candidates for various positions. Mm -hmm. So you can find out that there was no unity in the ruling party. But why you're saying that, that's not only in Ondo State. It happened in Imo State. It happened in Open State. So that, that seems to be what's going on with APC governors. They want control. Yeah. The fact that the National Working Committee wants control as well. So it's, <laughs> it's, left, it's left for the opposition in that situation to exploit, exploit that division. So, so why was it not exploited in Imo and Ogun State? It was exploited yeah. in Imo. How many seats did the APC win? No, we, we talk, I, I'm focusing on presidential uh, election now. I'm not saying that because this whole conversation stems from the fact that Yomi talked about Ondo State yes. and how um, APC has not been able to um, to secure Ondo State. I think Ondo State is the only state in the Southwest that they, did they win Ondo State? Yeah, PDP won Ondo State. PDP won Ondo State. State. Yeah. PDP won on those state, yeah. So, yeah. Anoyo. Anoyo. Yes. But for, so, for, um, for, for on those states, it is simple. Um, Akari Dolo is not, is not that much of a force to reckon with. You think? In my opinion. Yeah, but I, I think, um. Because we all know how we got there. Yeah, before, before, um, I, I lose my train of thought. Um, with regard to what you said about Ondo State, I think um, it's just a question of it, it's not a question of um, because there's infight in the party. There are lots of states, there are few states where APC are having the same problem. But what they've done, as far as I can see, in the build up to the election is try to maintain that their presidential uh, campaign structure in the states. Like, when you go to Imo State, despite everything that was happening, despite the embarrassment uh, between Opu Uzodima and Umwosu, even almost between Adam Zoshio Mole and Buari on stage, while they were yeah. uh, talking about the candidates, they still reasonably maintained um, allegiance to yes. Umwosu as the president. And whether um, Okorocha had his candidate in AAC and uh, I'm also had his candidate in APM. They made sure that their focus for the presidential election was definitely Muhammad Bari and all machinery went towards that. Can I can I just quickly chip in something here? In the case of Imo State, Okorocha's bone of contention with the National Working Committee was the governorship. I think he was able to get his way in the National Assembly primaries. Right. To get most of his candidates to fill those slots. Yeah. But it's it all boils down to them winning the main... Actually. Yes. So the infighting in Imo State was as a result of his son-in-law not being able to secure the party. His family so, talk crazy, basically. Yes. His son-in-law... <laughs> able to to secure the party's governorship ticket and we know the governorship election is still two weeks away as i when the presidential election was being held yeah but for the case of ondo the governor wanted his candidates to get into the national assembly in order to build a structure for himself he wasn't able to secure any of the senatorial tickets for his candidates. Yeah, but senatorial so, candidates won't have helped him as much as the House of Assembly. No, because 
as much as you are building a structure, you don't just need to have a structure in yeah. the state. You oh, yeah, need you're people right. in the federal you're because right. if I want to go back a few years in my state in Bialsa, Silver had the state house of assembly. The Abuja guys, they had their own thing going for them. So it, it was now a case of state versus federal. And we know how that turned out. So this yeah. is more like Akredolo wanting to have a structure both in the state and at the federal level as well. Hmm. So yeah. that, that was impossible. If you look at the other states, they didn't have this. But on those states was different because he was trying to build not just at the state level, at the federal level. Yeah, okay. So that was the reason for this. Okay, thank you very much, Yomi. I will have to, um, Derek, I'll have to call, call a shot there. There's, we've got a long way to go. And there's an interesting uh, section here that I, I really want us to get into uh, in a moment. And that's the the big losers of this election section. It's my gossip sec section. And I'm really looking forward to it. But before we get there, there, there are still a few more issues uh, to discuss. Uh, the next thing, uh, and this is this is a burning question for me because why setting up this platform? It's to actually encourage or, or or cause change in the way people think or see things. You know, change the old guy, the way we're doing things, change that, and do things differently. Because as far as I'm concerned, this presidential election has given us almost the same thing that we see every single time in every election. So uh, the two parties who do not have too much regard for the electorate still winning the election without any serious challenge. So now I'm going to ask the, you two guys a question, but it, it goes to you first, Yomi. Why did, did, why did the new B presidential candidates fail to mount any significant challenge in this election? And there was so see, much buzz. There was, they, they had so much buzz before the election, almost as much as this presidential, these two candidates in Atiku and um, uh, President Muhammad Buhari, with less structure, they had so much buzz, so much fire. There's a take key back movement of um, uh, Omoyele Shoure. There was this master plan and impeccable blueprint of Kingsley Mohalu, who did fantastically well in all the debate as far as I'm concerned. And there was this very amiable and lovable Feladro Toye, who, based on his fo uh, followership, you would expect that he would get more than 20, 30,000 votes in the presidential election. So, what is the problem we have? We're not saying it's time for them to win, because I remember I wrote a piece before this presidential election that, yes, we are not ready. That's the truth. But it's a process, and we have to build up to it. So what's the problem? Why is it not happening? Because I don't see this happening. This doesn't show that we have any significant... Um, uh, we're going to mount any significant challenge in 2023, as far as I'm concerned. And right. if that doesn't happen, our generation is gradually fading away. We fall into that same bracket. So why are we not mounting the challenge, Yomi? Well, um, I, I'm going to say three things. Number one, but I'll, I'll start with a short story, right? So in, 20, in 2015, at a particular polling booth around the Keja, right? So you had APC, PDP, and the other parties, right? And they all, you know, they were all there with their party agents and all of that. Yeah. And, you know, so APC then were smart enough to have brought food, hot rice, soft drinks, and all of that. And so while the voting was going on, you know, obviously our electoral law does not go against feeding you feeding people. people. <laughs> you understand? So now let me just get to the story. So while the feeding was going on, the PDP man was very hungry and he was looking. <laughs> looking <at him. laughs> so, you know, when they saw that the man was hungry, you know, in, in you know, in the spirit of sportsmanship, yeah, they offered rice. And cook. Oh, I'm not, I don't know if I'm supposed to mention the name of any brand. Now, lo and behold, right, I'm talking to you, I'm telling you the story that was narrated to me by the guy who, somebody who was actually there. The man collected the food, 
ate, and in no time, he slept off. Goodness. And then, obviously, the man needed comfort and got comfort. Now, the reason I've shared that story, as funny as it is, is quite sad, is that now that is the party agent of a political party. Right. Who was there? But somehow, food was enough to get him to misbehave and go against the normal dictates or the expectations of his political party. Now yeah. imagine when you don't even have any party agent at all. Yeah. Because don't forget, and I'm talking about structure, don't forget that, look, you this election, I think we had about 120,000 polling um, units, and I created, I think, an additional 40-something thousand. I, I'm not really sure how to object. Polling points, voting points, sorry. Mm-hmm. And so in total, you know, it meant that for this past election, the president just concluded one. We had about, almost about 170,000 voting points. You see, with all their followership and all their noise on social media, they did not have that structure. You understand? And see, the thing about that is, and the question about, okay, so why do they have the structure? You have a system where, number one, people are not willing to propagate their personal ego to just come together and form a formidable force. That's number one. Number two, you also have a system in Nigeria where just immediately after the elections, people disappear and come one year before the election and start making all the noise on social media. Yeah. You do structures like that. You, you see, you take your time. There are people that go for the long haul. So six years, five years down the line, what is your plan? You, you're not going to... You, elections... Nigeria wanted to contest, uh, conduct an election in 2019. You declared your intention to run in 2018, and you started running up and down. We are talking about PDP, the big most, you know, these guys have been around the block for a while. But you know that's not cheap as well. I know. But you see, okay, do you know that, well, it is, sta- it is said that well, um, Shoryu Shoure raised 150 million. Yeah, boy. He we- probably used half of them to travel around the world. No, I'm saying that without the structure. Yeah, that, that was just me joking, honestly. That was me joking. Yeah, I understand. But you see, imagine what you could have done if you had the structure. And to my, my last point, I've talked about structure. I've talked about, you know, coming too late into the system. Yeah. The other thing is, at the end of the day, you must be able to gauge the impact that you can have. Some of these guys... They, they are not even strong enough to contest for senators in their local, you know, local settings. And everybody now wants to become president. So you think some of them suffer from overambition? Of course. Some of these guys could have done well as senatorial candidates. They could have done well as, you know, even state house of assembly members. They would have done well as councillors, as ridiculous as it sounds. You see, you don't go into politics with your, with your big man mentality. Because don't forget, politics is about affecting people's lives, right? You don't have to become president to change people's lives, to affect people's lives. No, no. And imagine if some of them had gone for state house of assembly slots. It, it would have been a lot easier for them to start. And I like what Banky said. It's quite unfortunate that he did not win. Yeah, yeah. One local community at a time. You don't just come around because you have been a motivational speaker, you have been a former governor of the Central Bank, you now want to become Nigeria's president. Do you know what it means? So I think all of that affected them and the fact that they could not even come together to, because at the end of the day, it's about national interest. If all of these guys have come together and they are just one person and everybody rallied behind that person, I think even if the person will know eventually, well, the, the support would have been significant enough to make a bold statement. But because of all of it, you can imagine having 37,000 at the end of an election where the second person came with, you know, at 11 million, the first person at 15 million, and you are having 34,000? Yeah. It's- See, I, I looked at the percentage, the highest of the three of them, which is Shore, basically, they, they all fall into the same percentage. Do you want to know the percentage they had each in this election? I'd be interested to know. 
0.002%. Can you imagine? 0.020s after the decimal percent. It's quite sad, honestly. So that means... It's ridiculous. It is beyond ridicule. It is. Because that vote means that you probably will not even win a federal seat in your constituency. Not probably. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to be modest. Object- yeah. Yeah. So it is so, close. Well, now let, yeah, so- let thank you, Yomi, for that. Let me just throw this sec- the same question to you, D- Derek. So, do you have something to add to why these newbies aren't really mounting the challenge we have? Please, in in as short as it can be, please. Um, Yomi hit it spot on. I know I've had several conversations with you, Shegu, about the change that is required in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And I've always maintained that Nigeria, the problem we have in that country, you cannot change it from the top down. It requires a multidimensional approach. It needs to be started from the top and from the bottom at the same time. And I've also mentioned to a few persons that because you've been a motivational speaker doesn't mean you'll be a good president. I'm not taking jives at anyone, but that is the fact. You cannot... Well, be... it, it, Buhari is a testament. Buhari is not a motivational speaker. You cannot mount a serious challenge in the political arena of Nigeria without having a structure. And I've said this time and time again that I would have preferred the likes of Fela Durotoye, Kinsley Mogalu, and Showare to start from reps, from the Senate. Imagine if we had the three of them in national assembly. the governorship of their states and build a structure, build a profile. You can't just come. Obama cannot even do it. No, it, that does, it doesn't happen like that in America. In the, in the big... Um, it's not done. Um, it's not done. Look at Rochas today. Rochas contested for president three times <laughs> or more. And he found his level. And he went back to his states <laughs> to contest as a governor. And now he's killing himself <laughs> to, become, to a become a senator. To use all of this as a launching pad for 2023. You don't just come... You don't have a in 2023. Yes. <laughs> if that's his ambition. That is his ultimate goal. All right. Well, I think we'll, we're going to have a discussion <laughs> about it very, very easy when we get to that point. So yeah. okay. you, can't, you can't have contest the presidency of Nigeria or any state or any country, I would say, without having a structure, without having funds. Because... More or less, the funds might give you the structure. But then again, I think the structure is built over time, not just with funds. Because the way our politics is in that country, people will just come around you, eat your money, and after election, you don't see them again. They did it to Aria Kondi now. Yeah. So, they did it to Aria Kondi. You building a structure takes time. You build it over years. I would have preferred these guys starting from somewhere. And secondly... I think for me, it was a waste of time when we were sitting down listening to results and you hear AA, one vote, AAA, three votes. That country as it is, what I would suggest is we have a two or three party system. These little parties cannot mount a serious challenge on their own. There needs to be an alliance between these newbies. Come together to form an alliance to mount a serious challenge. And Yomi did mention something that not after the elections, we don't see you, there's no consistency. Then you come in 2022 again. After 2019, we don't hear from you, we don't see you. You come in 2022 and tell us you want to contest in 2023. These days, the social media has made it cheap for people to To keep their message out there. For people to be heard, we are not saying go 
to the radio stations or go on TV. Facebook, Instagram, all you need is data and you can pass your message across. So we need consistency on the part of these guys, not just after now we don't hear from them again. Yeah. And to be honest, I feel there's something missing somewhere. Um, the results have been counted. The results have been announced, rather. Maybe they have or maybe they've not, but I've not seen anywhere where all of these candidates put up posts to say, thank you, Nigeria. To those who voted for them, to say thank you, that this movement still continues, that we will not give up. I was looking at Banky's... I think, I think uh, yeah, we, let's not bring Banky into this because Banky, uh, or, or Olu Bankole Wellington holds a special place in my heart right now. No, I, so, yeah. Let, I was looking to a post of his and yeah. he, did, he did all yeah. of these things. Yeah, I know he did. I know he did. We'll get back to Banky later. No disrespect to him. Uh, honestly, I have a special uh, thing for... Banky on this program if we have time to discuss it. Even if we don't, we're going to find another time to discuss it. But we're talking about uh, whether they've uh, communicated to Nigerians after the election to express whether uh, they are happy with the result. Because that's what's expected after the result. The election does not end when the results are announced. Well, it's a process. Absolutely. You hear that? Congratulate the person that has won. Um, accepting, gracio being gracious in defeat. And or you don't. You say, well, you don't agree with the result. If you feel aggrieved by the result, or and you also use that medium to connect with those people, whether it's just one person that voted for you, to express your gratitude that they even took a chance on you. We have um, on a light hand note, we had someone like um, Donald Duke that had six votes in his polling <laughs> units. So we suggest that probably his, only, only his family members voted for him at the party agent. He staffs the numbers for him. Family members. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it is important that they do that regardless of what it is. But in, in fairness, I think I've seen Showre's. Showre has, I think he held an interview and he has said yeah. that, well, in six months, that they've been able to do what they did. And he pride himself in the fact that he defeated APC and PDP in his polling unit, at least, if he didn't do anything else. So, when, even when this presidential candidate, or so-called presidential candidate and vice presidential candidate, couldn't even win in their own polling unit. So, I think some of them have done it. Obviously, some of them won't. But taking the conversation away from you, and just adding a little bit on it before I end this, um... I think part of the problem, you guys have made very good points and uh, valid points. I think part of the problem is the is the see me attitude of Nigerians as well. <laughs> oh, I must be seen. I must be seen. Because remember, we had a situation where there was going to be uh, a pact. There was a pact, I should say, uh, yes. before this presidential election. None of this presidential candidate, none of this newbie, believed they had a chance. In the, in their heart, uh, deep down in their heart, I don't think any of them would come out or, or in, the, in the comfort of their house would say, oh, I think I have a chance to actually defeat PDP or APC, even without rigging. Because they are, like you said, the problem of Nigeria is multidimensional. To, to actually cascade your message down to the people, it's beyond Twitter and Facebook. It's beyond even having people in 120 polling, 120,000 polling units. It's beyond having money to actually buy voters. There's a lot, it, 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 there's a plethora of things that, that culminate into you actually being able to connect with the people and people actually taking a chance on you to even vote you in the polls. So we've got these people who, because of their selfishness, self-centeredness, um, ego, could not even form a basic alliance that we, we had, we had um, a coalition of over 40 parties in Nigeria, genuine or, uh, or otherwise, and four candidates could not even agree that, okay, for a better Nigeria, one of us should lead. I don't see anything wrong. I don't think, no disrespect to Kingsley Morgan lose profile. I don't see any reason why Kingsley cannot be a minister of finance 
or a secretary uh, to the federal government or a vice president for that matter. I don't see why the buck has to stop at him being president. I don't see why Feladro Toye has to just be the president and nothing else. I don't see what makes Shore the best presidential candidate any more than you or any more than uh, Abayomi uh, here. So that ego that, okay, well, uh, I didn't want to be in the pact in the first place and, or oh, I think pact was a bad idea. I, I think it just shows not just naivety, but ego and the, this popularity contest that it is me that people, that these people are doing. And also, it may interest you to know that the chairman or the chairperson of this so-called pact, do you know who that person uh, was? Obese Kusili. So this person must have been thinking of it that, okay, I'll run for president or not. Whatever the answer is, it's terrible. Whatever answer she chooses that, okay, well, I knew I was going to run for president. You knew you were going to run for president and you see you're chairing a pact alliance that you're not part of or you didn't know you were going to be president and you only decided after the pact alliance that, you know what, what would be a good idea? I just want to be the president of Nigeria. Well, <laughs> I think maybe she felt like they were not serious enough. So she, so she thinks that, okay, without any structure, or without actually thinking of actually being a president of Nigeria, that you just wake up one day that, okay, you know what would be a good idea? Let me just be the president of Nigeria since I've been a minister before. So I think it's just disrespect from these guys how they've handled this. And even after yeah. the debates, even after the debates, there was talk of alliance again. I think it dawned on them there, there and then that, okay, well, they're not going to mount any serious or significant challenge. And I still see that up until when the election was held, or the first date, and even the postponed date, there was no serious conversation on about, about yeah, it, this so-called yeah. alliance which kind of watered down the whole process. And you have the, the people like um, Obeze Kwisi now realizing after that, okay, well, I'm withdrawing from the race. You have uh, a deputy of, would be vice president um, signing up with uh, with APC. You've got Donald Duke, whose whole party took away his structure and just submitted themselves to APC. You've got someone like uh, Eunice Etujide, who... <laughs> Who has been saying, yeah, we need to do better and all that. Who just said that, oh, because we can't win. I think we should support Atiku Abubakar. I'm not against anyone supporting Atiku Abubakar or uh, Muhammad Buhari. But why first, why send people on a wild goose chase? Knowing fully well that you're not going to mount any serious challenge. Or you can't tell me just dawned on you. A month's election. I'd like to make a point. I'd like to okay. make a point. And to be honest, one of the reasons why these guys didn't make any serious challenge, let's let's be realistic with ourselves. We as Nigerians, we are not ready for a change. Yeah, we've said that. We've said that. But we, that we, notwithstanding, we are not ready. When I say we are not ready, Bio, when I say we are no. not ready, we cannot be complaining day in, day out. And at the end of the day, the difference between the first and the second to the other parties is I mean, immense. Yeah. Is, there's what they call protest votes. Yeah. If we want to change, fine. Can I, can I, I don't know anybody. I don't know any of the candidates. But I'm not voting for PDP and I'm not voting for APC. If we want to send a clear message as a country to the old guard is as good as why not the sec the third person who is behind Atiku having can up I, to seven million votes or six million votes. Can I can I just, can I just go in there? You see, the, the truth is I totally agree with you. You know, the fact that maybe Nigerians are not ready. But you see, being ready in of in and of itself needs to start you see in every revolution, right? Somebody always has to lead. Yeah. And you see, where there is no leadership, ultimately the revolution crumbles. It crumbles. So let me let me let me now put it back to you. So the Nigerians who are not ready, even if 
a lot of people want to see. Okay, I know a lot of people who want something ready. different. Exactly. But at the end of the day, they just said, you know what? If these guys are unable to make a pact as simple as a pact. As simple as like, a pact. How, how do you expect them to manage 250 ethnic groups, six geopolitical zones, three major that, languages, and 200 million that, people? Exactly. You see, for that pact, we had over, I think, about 17 presidential candidates. And so if, you see, because, you see, what you send to the people, the perception you allow people form about you matters a lot. And so if they could not make anything out of that pact, then they don't have any right to expect Nigerians to, to, waste, vote, their, to waste their time on them. Because the impression I got is that these guys are not serious. And Nigerians That's the same are not, impression. Because I see, at the end of the day, you know, look, I keep saying that Nigerians are just like any other, you know, um, they are just like people of any other country in the world. Macron came, sold his idea, you know, was able to get top shots of certain, you know, sections in the country behind him. You know, he got some, some guy who, has, you know, who had been an environmental activist for a while. People bought into it, his climate change agenda. They bought into all of, you know, all of, at the end of the day, he was able to win that election. But these guys, okay, I mean, there was a time that I remember myself and said, you, we analyzed the debate and all of that. If you even interrogate the content of their so-called policy um, positions on some issues, you can even find a lot of faults in the argument. Do you understand? So for me, I think, you know, I was saying somebody, and let me just, let me just wrap this up. I was, uh, I was saying to someone that, you know what, maybe some people, and it can even start from us, it can start from anybody, maybe some people need to come together as a, you know, as a group and say, you know what, we are not contesting for president. We're not doing anything, but as concerned youths whose lives are at stake, we would hold these things down for the next three years. And at the end of the day, we would shortlist five top Nigerians and do like an informal referendum, get the people to say, you know, just ask, throw an open question. Okay, of these five candidates, who do you think? It could be by text, it could be by anything. Do a massive campaign and then choose based on the informal referendum, based on the result of the informal referendum, and approach those people and say, well, this is what we have done. We have considered you. Nigerians are ready to vote for you. Can you please come and run? Because it seems to me that all these guys who are coming out, they are just like Shagun rightly pointed out. It's just a case of, you know, okay, let me, let me just say this. Right while the votes were being collated, while the results were being announced, one man stood up and said, as a former presidential candidate, even while the results mm-hmm. have not been announced, the INEC chairman had to caution him that while these results are still being counted and collated, you still remain a presidential candidate. Yeah. You know, if, is it, the moment you declare to run as a presidential candidate of a party, I think the DSS is supposed to give you some SSS guides. There's a particular presidential candidate that by the time they gave him his, I think they give them two or three, I'm not sure. He did not even have a car to put them. No driver, because they're not going to drive you. The GSS people are not expected to drive you. Mm-hmm. He, he was driving them, and the man was looking like a, an Uber driver carrying the GSS people, people that were appointed to guard you. you know, so these guys are not ready. And I, I'm talking, uh, it's so unfortunate because this could have been the best time yeah. for us as a nation to make a lasting you know, an impact in terms of we want these guys to know that we're tired, but they just born with that opportunity. And it's quite unfortunate and it's painful. It is painful. It is painful. And let's hope things change uh, between now. We've got four years to see <laughs> things turn around because that you're in Biribayism. We don't want people like that coming near power again. But, but that is his calculation well, because. There's this I'm talk, just telling you. There's this talk about the presidency moving to the south. I'm just telling you. There's nothing like a very basic. And he's trying to position future. himself. He can position himself in the goalpost or <laughs> in the toilets. I don't care. But a very basic. Oh well, I, I should say that is just my opinion. I'm not voicing uh, any po- uh, political opinion of any group or whatever. It's just my own opinion. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll we'll take a break here at this point, and we'll resume when we get back. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 